what do I mean by a tree? Um, if you're going to uh, toss a coin, well, obviously you get two choices. If you're going to um, roll a dice, you get to six choices. If you're going to roll again, you, you kind of spread out. Um, we'll do some trees in here. We'll talk about outcomes. We've got a lot of good experiments to do in here. Um, we toss coins using, the, using your calculator. Your calculator has a nice feature. And I got a sheet that just came up before. Uh, I have to find it. I think it's under probability. There's a um, there's a simulator here somewhere. I'll find the simulator somewhere. No, I'll find it. It's here somewhere. All right, we'll get to it. But we'll find the simulator and uh, teach you how to do these things. So probability, I like probability. So hopefully we'll be a little bit less smart with you than it's been in the past. All right. Now, probability has a few things we have to worry about. What you guys do when you flip a coin is an experiment. Okay. Theoretically, if I flip a coin, I should get heads half the time. Half the time, because the probability of getting ahead is one out of two, right? So if we say the probability of getting ahead is one out of two. I have a coin. It has two possible things that can happen, two outcomes. Either I toss it and I get ahead, or I toss it and I get a tail. So the probability of getting ahead, there's two outcomes, two possible things that can happen, and what do I want? I want it to be a head. So the head has one side of my coin over two possible outcomes. Now if I toss this coin ten times, I should technically get five heads and five tails. But in reality, when you do the experiment, you run a probability experiment, you get experimental results. And we'll, we'll talk about those in, in a few minutes too. But your results don't have to come out five heads, five tails. Okay, so you may get two heads, eight tails. Someone else may get all tails. Someone else may get four heads, six tails. Like, it varies. And we call this um, <clears throat> just a, like a very simple event. We have one thing that we're doing. We're going to toss a coin, and we're going we're to take a look at this in a second. But we're going to take a look at your probability. So don't expect, when you do an experiment, for your probability amount to always be the same. Um, unfortunately, they don't really get into like, what they call these things yet. Where is the definition? Um, you might even remember some of the, uh, some of these. Call these practical or theoretical? Does that ring a bell? No, I've never heard that before. No, experimental or empirical? I don't think I've heard that either. Oh boy. Okay. Sample space? That sounds great. Sample space sounds about right. Okay, so we'll be doing these. An event, an event is just what am I doing? What what do I want to do here? A simple event means I'm just doing one thing, tossing a coin. Uh, a multiple event or a compound event, I'm tossing a coin and spinning a dice, uh, spinning a wheel, tossing a dice. So uh, there's other things going on. Simple event, one thing at a time. Um, probability, so if you do this with me, this is, this is really, really important that you get the tree concept. Now, because we're going to tie your probabilities with this. This is where your outcomes come from and your sample space come from. So my goal is here to flip a coin three times. I, I have one coin, I'm going to flip it three, three times. I want to know what's the probability that I flip this coin three times and all three times I get heads. Or all three times I get tails. Or out of three times I get two heads and one tail. What are my probabilities? So the best way we can do this is with a tree diagram. Now, if you haven't done a tree diagram, 
do this with me. The easiest way to start is with you. And what are you going to do? Flip a coin. If I flip a coin, what is the possible outcome? Heads or tails. It's not going to change, right? So half of the time, and let's write these probabilities in here because this is going to tie this together for you. Half the time, I expect to get a head. Half the time, I expect to get a tail. This is my first toss. Now, my first toss, I got a head. So I'm going to toss the coin again. Is that going to have an effect on the second toss that I do? No, that's an independent event. One event does not affect the other. So if I toss the coin and got a head, does it mean I'm going to get another head? It means clear the board, probability is still one half all over again. So if I got a head the first time, second time around, I can still get a head or a tail. And this probability did not change. This probability stayed the same. Only two possible outcomes, one out of two. This is my second toss. Now, on my first toss, I could have got a tail, right? Yes. So, on my first toss, if I got a tail, I still had to toss again. And because it was an independent event, it didn't matter what I got. I still can get a head or a tail. And my probability isn't going to change. It's still going to be one half, one half. I know this sounds simple. But believe me, even the simple ones get a little confusing. And this is the same principle you will apply to do whatever it is we're going to, whatever experiments we're going to be doing. Now, third time around, I still got a head and a head, and I'm still going to have to toss again. I still only can get a head and a tail. Did my probability change because I already got two heads? Am I, am I more apt to get another head? Still one half, right? One half. One half. If I went ahead and ahead, and I tossed another head, I got three heads. Head and ahead, and I got a tail. These are where my where my outcomes come from. If my first toss was a head, my second toss was a tail, I still got to toss this thing again, and it's unrelated to my other two tosses. So I get one half, one half. Same thing happens down here. If I did a tail and then a head, I'm still going to toss this again. And I'm still going to toss this again if I had a tail and a tail. And the probabilities are fixed. They're not going to change. Nothing affected this. There were independent events. Which is why sometimes when people go to gamble, like you know those wheels where they, they place their little money on the numbers or the colors or whatever. Um, each each one of those, technically, if it's a fair wheel, has the same um, probability of happening as the one before it. But if you get somebody that's on a roll, they got five and then another five, you say, oh my God, I think five has to come out. And they're all independent of each other, unless, of course, someone's cheating. But the way your, your spaces work is it, it kind of gets a reset. The board gets cleared back off, and I do this again. Now, by doing a tree, I'm t I toss this thing three times. What are my possible outcomes of three tosses, not of just a head or a tail? This is called my sample space. So I, I follow my tree. I'm there's my trunk. It's like a tree that keeps branching out. I'm the trunk of the tree. If you don't have a place to start, start with you, because otherwise you do this. Heads or tails. You do this. Heads or tails. You do this. Heads or tails. And they're, they're not connected to each other at all. They need to come from one trunk, which is what a tree does, right? And then it goes and gets branches. So follow this along. Watch. Head, head, head. That's one possibility. I tossed the coin three times, so I got <coughs> all heads. Make sense? I tossed the 
toss the coin three times, there's another cat. Head, head, tail. <coughs> Follow your path, your branches. Head, tail, head. And the last one, head, tail, tail. Now, I'm not to another major branch. A major branch is just make a new column, and I'll show you why in a second. Make a new column with this guy. It's a major branch. So instead of getting first ahead, I first got the tail. But I still follow. I got a tail, a head, a head. I got a tail, a head, a tail. I got a tail, a tail, a head. And I got a tail, a tail, a tail. Now, I put all the one half out there for a reason. Whenever we're flipping a coin three times or we're doing something repetition, you're going to multiply those probabilities. So, if I multiply out my, my branches, if I'm on this branch, there's a one half times a one half times a one half. What is one half times one half times one half? One eighth. One eighth. Good. If I do it again, there's a one half times a one half times a one half. They're all going to be the same because unfortunately a coin has a fixed probability, one half, one half. A coin and determining if it's a male or a female have the same type of setup, right? Because isn't a male or a female one half, one half? Like, what are your chances of having three children, having all boys, having all girls, having two boys and a girl? It's the same as plucking a coin. So, follow your thing. I'm a one half, times a one half, times a one half. All of these branches will have one eighth. Now, the nice part about the probabilities is my total probability of every possible outcome of all outcomes has to equal 1. So if I add this up, I have 8 of these things. And 8 over 8 adds up to 1. <laughs> now a tree is a nice way to figure out your probability. So is the sample space. How many items in my sample space? This is my sample space. How many items in my sample space? Eight. This is my bottom number. Eight. So now, watch. What is the probability of getting a head, a head, a head? One over eight. What is the probability of getting two heads and a, two heads and a tail in any order? So I add two heads and a tail, this one, two heads and a tail, this one, two heads and a tail, this one. Nope, nope, nope. How many? Three out of eight. If I follow my tree, I can do the same thing. A head to head to tail. Oh, that's a one eight. A head to a head and a tail in between, this is a one eight. And here's my other one. This is a one eight. It's a little harder on the tree to see it, but once you get it to the sample space, it makes a lot more sense. What is the probability of getting two tails and a head? Three out of eight. The same as this one, right? Three out of eight. What is the probability of getting a head? Um, given I have two tails. Given that my two tails came out first. Given that my two tails came out first, what is the probability of me causing the third one at the head? One at eight, just this guy. Two tails, make it a head. One at eight. You can pull all your probabilities right from your sample space. That's the beauty of a trick. Now, a tree kind of gets a little cumbersome. A, a coin toss only has two possible outcomes. A dice has six possible outcomes. So if I'm going to flip this dice three times, I'm going to get six, 
and each one off of that, six, and each one off of that, six. Here's your counting principle at work. My coin plus, <coughs> excuse me, has two possibilities. Two possibilities. Two possibilities. Here's your counting principle at work. You might have remembered this one. So two times two times two says I should get eight outcomes. Uh, I should get eight outcomes. I think I'm too close to the top. Maybe. Okay, so this is going to be equal to eight outcomes. And does that make sense? You might have remembered in the reason plus question, I have ten pairs of pants. I have two shirts. I have three pairs of sneakers. How many possible outfits can I make? Remember those? That's your counting principle. Those are probably what everybody remembers. Maybe Sunday. I have four kinds of ice cream. I have three kinds of toppings. I have two types of syrup. I multiply those possibilities together. That tells me how many outcomes I get. That's your counting principle at work. So I can figure out how many things I should get in my sample space all at the same time. Are we feeling this trade? Okay. It, it actually tells us a lot. It keeps our probabilities. I like to put the probabilities on the branches because eventually we, we are going to be multiplying them across. Now, every once in a while, you get one that's not a fair coin. So watch what happens. This is not a fair coin. So if I'm going to toss this coin, maybe my probability of heads is two-thirds. My probability of tail would then be what? One-third. I'm still going to be like this. Here's me. With a smile. I'm still going to flip a heads and a tail. I'm still going to flip a heads and a tail. I'm still going to come out here and do all my heads and tails. I'm still going to get eight possibilities. However, watch what's going to happen. Flipping a head is now going to be two-thirds times two-thirds, times two-thirds. It's just going to change my probability because my coin was not fair. It's not going to be one half of the time. Two out of three times I'm going to end up getting ahead. You know those trick coins? Sometimes you have a coin that has both heads on, heads on both sides. Okay, so when we multiply across, we're going to get eight out of nine. This is guaranteed to happen more than anything else here. And then we will figure this out. We'll, we'll do something else with that. But sometimes they don't have fair, fair talk. All right. Here's a good one. What happens if I'm doing two different things? If I'm tossing a coin and then I'm rolling a dot. So what I'm asking is, what could I possibly get? I could get a head and say I tossed the one. I could get a head and then I tossed the two. So I'm expecting two things to happen. A head to a tail, a one, two, three, four, five, six. When we talk about a die, with it, unless it specifically says a different side, it usually has six sides. And each one has the same probability of happening. The probability of getting a 1 is the same as the probability of getting a 2, is the same as the probability of a 3, and so forth. It's, it's a fair shot. So if I'm going to make a tree out of this, this one's not so bad because we kind of see a pattern when we do our sample space. But if I'm going to make a tree out of this, I start with me and I toss my coin. What happens when I toss a coin? What can I get? Heads or tails. So I'm also going to put my probabilities on here. I think once you see the probabilities, they make more sense. So half of the time I get ahead, theoretically, 
classical probability, how do you use theoretical? Do you remember that at all? So head, I do. I flip a coin, I got a head. Now they hand me the dice. What could happen when I roll the dice? One through six. So I just made six of these branches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I could put a one six on each of these. Because this is a fifth. This is theoretically that's what's gonna happen. I do the same thing if I flip the tail. So this is my one six and one six. Yeah. Counting principle says I have two possibilities on my coin, six possibilities on my die. Altogether, I should have 12 outcomes. Do I have 12 of that final branch? Six and six, right? Here's my sample space. A head and a one. A head and a two. A heads and a three. And I can kind of see this pattern happening without doing my three. Now I go to the tail. It's a separate branch. Bring it here. You can differentiate a little easier. Now, did I get 12 outcomes? And my total outcome is my bottom number, 12. So I say, what is the probability of getting a head and an odd of a, of a die. How many heads and odd numbers do you see? Three. One, two, three. So what's my probability? Three out of twelve. If I want, I reduce it down to one out of four. Well, what's the probability of just getting an odd on the plot of my die? Regardless if I have a heads or tails, isn't it half the time I should get an even? Half the time I should get an odd? So if I count my odds, one, two, three, four, five, six, doesn't it still work off my sample space? Won't it still work off of this guy? Here's my odds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of twelve. Doesn't it work off of that as well? Okay. The trees are important. So that you see how the trees work. Okay. You guys are now going to try. Oh, maybe. In your book, try it once. Which is at the top of page 131. It says, for each probability experiment, determine the number of outcomes and identify the sample state. So the first one says, the probability experiment consists of recording the uh, response to the survey at the left and the gender. They could have, let's just do this one. They could have three responses. And how many choices for a gender? Two. Either be a male or a female. So make me a tree and give me a sample space for how many <coughs> we're going to get to this. First of all, how many of these do I have? How many responses? Three. How many choices for gender? Male or female? I should get six outcomes. When you do your tree, do your tree and give me a sample space. So what do I do next after this? Riley, what did you do next? The three branches. So what's the probability of each one of those? 
one third. You have three possible things. Everybody has an equal probability of, of coming out here. And what did you call them? Okay. So yes, no, and not sure. Can I put a, an S for not sure? It looks like sure, but that will be our not sure. Yes, no, and let's make it unsure. How about that? A U. Okay, now, we said we get six. Count your last branch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that six outcomes? What are they? I am a male. I said yes. I am a male. I said no. I am a male. I said not sure. I am a female. I said yes. I am a female. I said no. I am a female. I'm not sure. Six outcomes. One half times one third is one sixth. All the way down. So one six times six is six over six equals one. So what is the probability that I am a male and I said no? One out of six. What is the probability that I am a male? And I said yes or no. Two out of six. And then I could reduce that down at the end. All your probabilities should be reduced at the end. Um, don't reduce them until at the very end because pretty soon we'll be adding, adding those together. So you kind of want the denominator to be the same. So hang on to that thought for a second with a reducing part at the end. And if you're going to give me a decimal probability, go between zero and one. They are never negative. So if you're going to either see it as a decimal in, in terms of point one third, point three three three, you're going to see it as a fraction. We're going to go three decimals on the probability. One third. Um, you could see one dot dot, one out of three. We don't use that out that often, but that does come about. Probabilities will never be negative. You won't have a negative probability. Are we good with this? Yes? Okay.